Hello and welcome to a special interview for the wire supported by Glendivitt Books. A critical question at the top of everyone's mind is who's going to win the electoral contest in Uttar Pradesh? My guest today is firmly convinced that the BJP will lose, it will not form the new government. Joining me now to explain how and why he's come to this firm belief is the former Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and the former Vice Chancellor of Jamia Millia Islamia, Najib Jang. Mr. Jang, you've told me that after the first two rounds of voting in Uttar Pradesh, you're absolutely convinced the BJP is going to lose the election. It will not form the new government on the 10th of March. Are you absolutely sure of this? I believe I'm pretty sure that uh, the next government in UV will not be a BJP government. You really are pretty sure of this? I think I'm pretty sure of this. What do you mean you think? <laughs> well, uh, as you say, I, I think that they will lose the election. They will lose the they election? They will lose the election, yes. In which case, which party or which parties are likely to form the government? Do you believe the Samajwadi party and their allies are going to form the government on the 10th of March? I think the only alternative is the Samajwadi party and they will form the government. Well, let me ask you this. Will the Samajwadi party and their allies together cross 202 and thus have a majority of their own? Or will they need support from other parties? I do not think they will need support from any outside party. I think that they are heading for a comfortable uh, win in this election. So just to underline the important things you've said, you believe the BJP is going to lose? Yes? Yes. You believe the Samajwadi party and its allies will have a comfortable majority on their own and will not need anyone else's support? Indeed, I do believe that. All right, that is very clear. Let's then try and understand what is the basis for this sure confirmed belief? And I'll begin by looking at the factors that in a sense work against the BJP. Now, in 2014, 2017, 2019, when the BJP swept UP, Narendra Modi was the face of the BJP campaign. This time around, he seems to have taken a bit of a backseat, and the far more prominent face is Yogi Adityanath. Do you feel that's working against the BJP's interests? Uh, Karan, the Prime Minister is a larger-than-life figure in the cow belt. Uh, he, he is a magnet to attract votes. Uh, he is charismatic, he speaks so well, uh, and, and the original magic of Modi that may have waned a bit still exists in the cow belt. Had he been the face of uh, this election in Uttar Pradesh, I have no doubt that it would have made a considerable difference and I would not have spoken to you uh, as confidently as I'm speaking now. In fact, not only the Prime Minister, but not even Mr. Shah is the face of this election. It is, uh, it is uh, a Yogi Adityanath election versus others. And that, has, that uh, carries with it uh, the pluses of his government and the baggages that he carries with him. So that, I think, is an extremely negative factor uh, playing it. And in fact, it is the prime factor uh, the absence of Mr. Modi that will lead to the defeat of the BJP. So by not fielding Mr. Modi as their main face and their main campaigner, but instead choosing to field the Chief Minister Yogi Dhyatinath, the BJP is actually, you're saying, almost ensured that they will lose. I think it was a major tactical mistake, a tactical error. In, this is a battle and it is uh, it's a tactical error in the fight. Let's come to some of the other challenges the BJP faces. The other one is the farmers issue, as well as the widespread problem of stray cows. One reads a lot about this in the papers, but on the ground in UP, how is this working? Is it working against the BJP? Let me uh, speak of the farmers first. I think that through the year and a quarter that the farmers uh, agitation went on, the impression was that the central government uh, waited to tire them out. There was a great level of hubris. Uh, there was overconfidence. And after the 26th January incident, I think the farmers were deeply insulted. Uh, they were called traitors. They were called terrorists. Uh, some were called Khalistanis. And there was virtually no sympathy coming for them. 
uh, the Supreme Court had formed this committee and we just don't know what happened to the committee. Some report was submitted, we just don't know. And then a year later at the Ghazipur border, when the agitation was actually waning in a way, uh, they tried to forcibly remove the barricades and that is when uh, Mr. Tiketh came in. And you had this 50 plus year old farmer, a great personality in that movement, uh, he sat there and he said that I have no alternative but to commit suicide and that once I am gone, the police will come and take you away and he wept copious tears. Those two minutes changed the farmer mood. It changed the farmer mood in Western UP completely against the ruling party. And in fact, it was, a, it, it was uh, the first step, I think, towards the farmers realizing that they had to politically get their act together to have their demands met. But in November, the Prime Minister repealed the farm laws. Of course. Is this still an issue that rankles today? Or have they forgotten and have other things taken precedence? That's the point. Will the farmers' issue still rankle and determine how people vote? A little, little, too little, too late. Uh, what has happened to the repealing of the laws on the field? Do they believe it? Where is the committee that was supposed to have been set up? Has it act, been acted on? And the main issue, which is the, uh, the MSP, how is it being dealt with? Is anybody speaking of the MSP? So all the issues that lie behind the farmers' laws continue to rankle and they will determine how people vote, particularly in Western UP. That's what you're saying. Not only rankle, it is hurting them more that here the Prime Minister comes and speaks to us and nothing happens. So it's created an atmosphere of disbelief. And that, that matters a lot when people come to vote. You see, it's common knowledge. This is what matters now. They will vote against. So the farmers' laws has not just hurt the farmers, it's also diminished trust and faith in the government and perhaps Modi as well. It diminishes faith greatly in the entire government because they have not acted on what the Prime Minister said. So this is another reason why UP, but particularly Western UP, will vote against the BJP? Uh, uh, Western UP most certainly, and then the Tarai region, which happened because the way uh, the, the MOS uh, home behaved in the Tarai region. And is the bail being granted to the MOS's son another problem? That is just the bad luck of the party. I mean, the bail may have been granted in normal course by the court. But it happened on the wrong day it at the wrong time. The wrong time. What about the widespread problem of stray cows? How is that affecting farmers and voters? I think the problem of the cows has not been adequately understood uh, by, by us in urban India. Please understand one thing. The cow is a holy animal to the farmer. It's just not her milk. It's even her uh, urine that has medicinal impacts. The cow dung is used in many ways and we worship the cow. Here, uh, in the evenings, the cow is coming in large numbers, it's marauding over my fields and damaging my livelihood. But I, who worship this animal, take a stick in the middle of the night and beat it to leave my field. I'm 70 years old, I'm shivering in the cold, I dislike sitting there at night because in the day I have worked on my field and at night you expect me to beat my cow, beat my mother. It impacts my, it impacts my mind. This it's is impacting creating, me psychologically. This is creating trauma for farmers. Yes, of course, it's creating a psychological trauma for everyone there. And again, they blame the BJP. Because in the last three, four years, you haven't built Gaushalas enough. I mean, when, you, when we banned uh, the usage of any kind of, uh, of cow meat or their skin, then we should have ensured that there were Gaushalas that, they, that would keep the cows. Uh, I don't see enough Gaushalas. Let's come to a third factor that possibly is working against the BJP in UP, and that's unemployment and lack of jobs. Now, data put out by the Center for Monitoring the Indian Economy has made it crystal clear that this is a nationwide problem. But how badly is UP affected? And what impact will this have, unemployment, lack of jobs in UP, on the way people vote? Even the data put out shows that UP has a larger problem than other states, number one. Uh, in the last two years, 
unemployment in UP has doubled. That has been admitted in the assembly uh, by the minister in the UP assembly. Employment, unemployment today ranks at about 35 lakhs in Uttar Pradesh compared to 12 or 13 lakhs two years ago. So what is the young man doing? Let's understand this. Lalu Prashad sometimes said, Ke ghar mein na ho aata, mujhe chahiye data. The young man takes his, his mobile, puts in his 2 GB or whatever for the day, and goes out of the house at 12 noon to use his data till about 5 p.m. when it runs out. He is doing Instagram. He is on Facebook, so he knows internationally what's happening around the world. And he's watching pornography. His health is being impacted. His mind is blown because he's seeing himself unemployed. Years ago, they would play football. They would do kabaddi. They would do kho-kho. Now he's on this little instrument, uh, bemoaning his luck, sitting by the chopal and saying, where am I going? And it's not only him, it's his family which is bemoaning their luck. That what is happening to this young fellow who only plays with this little instrument and has no job. And once again, Modi and the BJP are blamed for this? Well, who else to blame? Because when I lose my job, I am asking what is the government doing to give me employment? And do I see enough? Look, the non-technical jobs in the railways were, were advertised, if you remember, and there was a rioting. Because for every job, there were thousands of applicants. Today in Uttar Pradesh, graduates are working under Mandrega. Have you imagined that? That I go and do an MA or a BA, and then I take up a manual job where I take off my shirt, I go in the field, and I take a powder to work on, the, on, 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 uh, on, 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 on a road for eight hours, 10 hours, because I need to I need to show employment, I need to feed my family. There's a fourth factor I imagine that's also working, but I wonder how much it's working in the background in UP, and that is COVID and the clear inept handling of it by the Yogi Dithyanath government. Is that still a negative issue that rankles with people, or has the length of time since the second wave ended, and the fact that the third Omicron wave was short-lived and pretty moderate, does both of that together mean that COVID is not a concern. What happened and the trauma is in the past. It's not going to determine how people vote. You know, this common belief that uh, public memory is short and what happened in COVID-2 or the phase 2 is forgotten. I want to ask a simple question. What happens to the mind of a man who's carried his father, his mother or his sister or his neighbor on his shoulders? I, they have died a painful death. They were gasping for breath. I could not provide a cylinder. I went to a government hospital. I was said, I'm sorry, uh, we can't help you. I went to a private hospital. They said, sorry, we can't help you. In any case, I can't afford the private hospital. So what do I do? And when in this uh, traumatized condition, I need to cremate them, I find no cremation ground available. So I am going on the banks of the Holy Ganga and actually burying my rel relative. Or floating them down the river. Or floating them down the river. And what happens when you bury? I have seen this in the Bhopal gas tragedy. I was in Bhopal uh, when the gas tragedy occurred. Uh, we couldn't find, we, A, we stopped distinguishing between Muslims and Hindus. We didn't care. So the Muslim could well have been cremated and the Hindu could well have been buried. In this case, when you bury and you don't dig deep enough, then the dogs come and take out the body. This has happened in Uttar Pradesh. You think that in five months, people have forgotten this? People's memories are short. Is this a joke? Now, all of this is obviously known to Yogi Adityanath. He can't be ignorant of it. To what extent has his campaign, to what extent have his speeches both responded to these concerns and also appeased them? I, I, am, I am really very surprised. Uh, uh, at, at the campaign that Mr. Adityanath has, uh, has carried out. Because uh, in the last uh, one month or two months, apart from the advertisements, let's leave out the advertisements which show uh, major achievements of the government, but his campaign, his, his, um, the words that he has used, I hear Jinnah, Pakistan, Abba Jan, Pajama, Topi, Kabristan, uh, 
and such like. And 80 versus 20. 80 versus 20. So, you know, it's the campaign is, uh, the campaign is so, is so one-sided that uh, to me it's showing an intellectual limitation that you're not talking of actually the work you have done because I'm sure there's, there's been some work done. Uh, they did. Uh, but aren't they, you missing the point of the campaign? Clearly, he's not talking of the work he's done. You grant him the honor of saying that he has done work. Others would question that, but leave that point aside. What he's doing by talking of Abba Jan, Kabristan, 80 versus 20, is polarizing the voters. He's trying to unite Hindus behind him and in the process make them forget the four concerns you've just mentioned in detail. Is that polarization working for him? I think it has not worked in this election at all. I think that the people of this country are wizened up to that. I think we are putting uh, a limitation on the intellect of people that they will only be carried away by Hindu versus Muslim. That is a horse that is flogged to death. You can't revive it now. So polarization may have worked in 214, it may have worked in 217, it may have worked in 219, but you do not believe it's going to work in 2022. It will work marginally. We can't rule that out. There is a certain but, segment. But enough to save the BJP skin? I don't think so. That's the main point? Yes, I don't think so. All right, let's at this point flip the discussion. So far, we've talked about the challenges, the weaknesses that are perhaps, in quotes, undermining the BJP. Let's now turn to Akhilesh Yadav. What's working for him? Because you firmly believe that Akhilesh Yadav and his allies will get a comfortable majority of their own. So what's working for Akhilesh Yadav? I must take you back about eight, nine months. Eight, nine months ago, the salons of Delhi, the thinking people of Delhi would say, Akhilesh to ghar mein baith gaya hai. What's he doing? He's afraid of COVID, he's not moving out. This election is a done deal for the BJP. But what the man was doing was I think he mastered Sun Tzu beautifully. He, he spent his time preparing for this battle. He, he allied with the backward caste in a, in, in a way that has never been done before, number one. He realized that this MY card, the Muslim Yadav card, is going to boomerang. So it has to be played, not put aside, but played in a very intelligent manner. So what has he done? The seats to Muslims are much less than last time. He's, I think, even about 60 odd seats. The seats to Yadavs are even lesser. But, and he has realized that now it's time that the other backward classes realize that the political power is shifting to them because of their numbers. So you have Kuris, you have Rajpars, you have Mallas, you have Nishads, you have Gujars, you have Kashyaps, uh, and the entire Mahandal group. That those are the people that you will target. And if you can get them, then their numbers are so overwhelming. Don't forget that they are 41 to 45 percent in Uttar Pradesh. And they had gone to the BJP in the last three elections. This election, fortunately, unfortunately, the perception and perceptions matter in elections. The perception of Thakurva puts the OBCs in a very disadvantageous position. So whether it is actual Thakurva or not does not matter. Thakurva is, of course, a term that applies to the sort of government and the perception of that government run by Yogi Dityana. That is right. That is. Right. I'll come to so, no. How let me let me just uh, carry on. Uh, just let me add the other things that Akhilesh has done. It's not only the caste alliances. He speaks of women. He speaks of the unemployed. He talks of giving cheaper electricity. He chiefs. Of, he talks of giving education to girls, and. Uh, uh, the, the very relevant point that he has made is that you don't consider me a Hindu because I'm a backward. I am a Yaduvanshi. Lord Krishna, I come to, from the tribe of Lord Krishna and I am not being considered a Hindu because I'm a backward. So his Hindutva is an evolved Hindutva in a sense that is all encompassing for the entire Sanatan Dharam. Let me take up on that particular point. You're talking now about how he's responded to the challenge of Hindutva, which is basically the main strategy of Yogi Dityanath. Polarize, unite Hindus, get them to vote for me. 
you're saying that in terms of his response, Achilles' response to the challenge of Hindutva, both what he said, but also what he hasn't said, as well as the sort of candidates he's chosen, and the deliberate reduction in Yadav and Muslim candidates, is all intended to also battle against the Hindutva being fought from the other side. Absolutely. He has taken on, he says that this, uh, this is an ocean. Hinduism, Sanatan Dharam is an ocean. I am part of it, so are the upper caste. And you are saying that he's handled Hindutva and responded to it very cleverly. Yes, absolutely. He has not denied it at all. It exists, it's a reality. We are 80%. But this 80% is all encompassing and it will so slowly include the Muslims. And this response, this clever response by Akhilesh is both in terms of what he's done and what he said, but also in terms of what he hasn't spoken about. His silence is also important here. Absolutely, absolutely. He doesn't speak against the upper caste. He has no angst against anyone. So this is a young man who has evolved politically a great deal. Like I said, he has mastered the art of battle. He has gone into this war thinking that what are the steps taken to, to, to actually defeat uh, the largest political party in the world. This is your reference to the Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu? Absolutely. In other words, Akhilesh has done his homework, prepared his strategy, right? And when people thought he was withdrawing and effectively giving up, he was actually preparing. Yes, I saw that. I have observed this over the last 8-10 months. Let's then come to how different sections of the population in UP will vote, because that at the end of the day is often critical, particularly in a state like Uttar Pradesh. Now, let's start with the others. Most people believe, and I'm sure you do too, that the others will stay loyal to the Samajwadi party. But the problem is, there are only roughly 20% of UP's 41 to 42, 43% OBC population. 80% of that 42% are non Yadav OBCs. And in 2017, they voted very solidly for the BJP. This time, do you really believe that this rainbow coalition of alliances that you spoke about, that Achilles has put into place, is sufficient to wean them to him? That's what we see in the field. Look, the Yadavs actually make about 8 or 9% of the entire population. Let's presume 6% vote for Achilles. That's fine. The other remaining 37-38% of them overwhelmingly went with the BJP in the last three elections. This time, this coalition, the Rajvars, which are, which are a very major uh, part uh, in Eastern UP, the Mauryas, the shifting of the Mauryas, the shifting of the Jats, we are not counting in the Gujars, the Kashyaps, the Koris, the Lodhs, uh, the, the BJP lost a great leader in Kalyan Singh. So, when you, when, you, when you look at this combination, then gradually we see, and the hurt that they have been feeling, like I said, it's a matter of perception. The hurt that they have been feeling, that, uh, that this has been Thakurvad, that we have been let down, that this is an upper caste that is trying to dominate us, that it's not understanding that we have the numbers to get strong politically. That entire rainbow coalition is now shifting, I believe, substantially to the Akhilesh camp. You're saying two things there. One, that they believe that they were used to help bring the BJP to power in 217, 219. And then, under the Thakurvad government that Yogi Adityanath exhibited, they were pushed to the margin. So they're both hurt as well as felt feeling they were used. One thing is that there's no Modi this time, like I said that uh, things may have been different. This is and where Modi's absence becomes critical. And he is himself a backward. Please not, let's not forget that. Mr. Modi's uh, initial uh, thing was uh, that he is himself Are a you backward. also saying that the resignation and defection of 10 or 11 MLAs, including three ministers, all of whom came from these non other OBC cast, was critical for both Akhilesh and for the BJP? Yeah, these, these two of them are weathercocks. Uh, much like what our friend Paswan used to be, uh, Rajvar and Maurya, these are weathercocks of election. They have moved to the party which they perceived as winning. So the wind changed when they defected? Yes, indeed. Let's come to the Muslims. They constitute roughly 19.5% of the population of the state. I believe in 2017, 58% of Muslims voted for the Samajwadi party, but 42% 
got split between Congress, BSP, and a small fraction of Shias even went with the BJP. How confident are you that this time a much higher percentage of the Muslim vote will go with SP? A, there is a big misconception in India that the Muslims vote as a group en masse towards something. That doesn't happen. It's never happened. But it's a belief. And people understand that. Undeniably, a larger number of Muslims have started voting the Samajwadi Party after the gradual erosion of the Congress Party. I think in from 2012, when uh, Akhilesh won that first election and he came in with uh, 224 seats, he at that time had 29% 20, vote in his favor. Uh, the Muslims have, by and large, in larger numbers, voted Samajwadi. But they never had it as bad as they have had it in the last five years. By bad, I mean the actions of the government that were perceived as blatantly anti-Muslim, whether they were CAA, whether it is the lynchings, whatever, and, and the dialogues of, uh, of Mr. Adityanath. Anti-Romeo squads, love oh, jihad, yeah. the treatment of butchers and meat sellers. So everything, this time they realized that getting a few, also please remember that at every election, the Muslims bargain for a few seats. You know, give me a seat and I'll, 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 I'll join your party, make me an MLA. This time, I think sensibly, the, it dawned on the Muslims that not, let's not bargain for a few seats here and there. Let's look at the chief minister, because he is the man who will change, who will make life comfortable for us. I don't think any chief minister changes destinies, but he will make life a little more tolerable. And so this time, if it was 58 last time, as we know from numbers, it's easily going to be 80 and more. I would have been, con I would have been confident in saying more than 80. I am only being a little conservative in saying 80 because I think that as a class for the first time, for the first time it is going, again, uh, is going with the belief that they go with a, with a particular party. So this time... They will vote en masse one way. I am, I am understanding that the, that the Muslim community in Uttar Pradesh en masse are going to, uh, to the Samajwadi party. The Prime Minister speaking yesterday in Kanpur said, in fact, Muslim women are going to be silently and quietly voting for him. Well, uh, the Prime Minister has say, been saying that for a long time. He said that when he did that uh, triple talaq business and also yesterday. I don't see that, uh, that the Muslim girls uh, being happy over this hijab issue at all. Whatever the merits and demerits of it, we are not on that. But I am not seeing the, the Muslim girl in UP, in Iran, in the Middle East, anywhere, being happy over this controversy being raised. So there is no subterranean silent movement whereby Muslim women are voting quietly for the BJP. You don't believe that? I don't think so at all. At all? At all. Let's come to what are called the upper castes and the forward castes. I believe they constitute somewhere between 15 and 18 percent of UP's population. 60 percent of them are Brahmins, 30 percent are said to be Thakurs. Now together, they've been very loyal BJP voters for a long time. Do you really see a change coming there as well? No, I think the Thakurs will very much remain with the BJP. I think the Baniya vote uh, will remain with the BJP. And there has been a dilemma for the, uh, for the Pandit vote. Where does he, he doesn't want to go to Samajwadi, certainly not. He would not in this election uh, join the BSP. That's a losing vote despite the BSP giving them a lot of, uh, uh, lot of seats or candidates. So where does he go? And here there is a new actor in this whole game. And that is Mrs. Priyanka Gandhi. Her giving seats to 40% women, her speaking uh, an attractive language and speaking well, uh, I think she has offered an alternative to the Brahmin voter that, that there is hope in the future in the Congress party. And so she will attract a large number of Brahmin votes. Some will remain with the BJP. But you're saying a very interesting thing. The Brahmin vote. Yes may not go to the Samajwadi party, but it will perhaps desert the BJP in large numbers and go to Congress instead. As far as you're concerned, that means BJP support goes down. 
Yes, it certainly goes down even with the Brahmin vote. Uh, the perception among Brahmins in the Dehat has been that this is a Thakur government, that this has not been fair to us. Uh, if you see even that encounter of Vikas Dube, you know, Vikas Dube was a don. Everyone accepts it. But the encounter was done in such a ham-handed manner that it was a fake encounter. And that was perceived by the Brahmins as, as an attack on a Brahmin dawn. So, you know, you should hear uh, Vikas's wife speaking on television. So, understand this. I mean, I understand this, that the impression of a, of, of a personified Thakurvad government is impacting Brahmin vote. And since 60% of that 15 to 18% upper caste vote share is Brahmin, yes. from the BJP's point of view, if a large number do not vote for BJP, it becomes a serious problem. Yes, it becomes a problem, of course. Finally, there is the Dalit section of the population. That's 21% of UP. And I imagine Jatavs will stay very loyal to Mayavati. They've always been very loyal supporters of Mayavati. The question is, what will happen to the non-Jatav Dalits? Now, in 2017, the BJP very successfully pulled them across. Do you see change happening here as well? Uh, the Jatavs have always remained uh, loyal to Bhanji. There is a new factor again among Jatavs this time, that is uh, uh, Chandrasekhar Bhim Ravan. And he will take a bit of the Jata vote. He is the new face of the Jat up-and-coming Jata. Uh, he has uh, offices across uh, Uttar Pradesh today. But Having that will only affect Mayavati. It yes. will neither strengthen Akhilesh nor weaken no, the BJP. No, yeah. I am talking of the Jata vote, that where it goes. Uh, similarly with the, with the Dalit vote, it largely stays with Mayavati. And you can see it across elections that her vote share never wavers down below 23-22%. This election, while she is perceived as a losing party, the question even in the Dalit mind is, why should we lose our vote, right? But the Dalit is chary of uh, voting the, the Yadav, because the Samajwadi is perceived as a Yadav party. And there is no doubt that the Muslims and the Yadavs flex muscles once they come in power. That's a big, uh, that's a big negative aspect of the Samajwadi party. And they, I don't know the extent to which they have fought that negative perception. So the Dalit is actually confused between Mayavati, between Chandrasekhar, between the Congress party. You see, everybody is writing off the Congress party. But please understand that this 100-year-old party used to have a office in every village in Uttar Pradesh. But, but why won't the non-Jata Dalits stay with the BJP, which is the way they voted in 217? That is the, again the Thakurvad factor. That I think the Dalit has seen in the last five years that I get nothing from the BJP. I trusted them. But under Mr. Adityanath, I get nothing. Under Mr. Modi, it may have been different again. It's a perception. So this is very similar to the non-Yadav OBCs. Yes. They feel they were used to bring the BJP to power and then forgotten once the BJP got into government. This is the impression generally that the Dalits have. But this is also similar to what's going to be happening to Brahmins. The Brahmins have reduced the percent to which they vote for BJP. They'll go to Congress. And you're saying non-Jatav Dalits could do the same thing disassociate from the BJP. They may some go to Mayavati, some may go to Congress, right? yes. but the BJP as a result will be weakened. Again, Akhilesh may not be strengthened, but the BJP will be weakened. You see, the only party that stands to lose is the BJP because they were voted so heavily. 40% went to the BJP. Anything coming down, it is they who is losing. And anything going up, it is the others that are gaining. So we have to understand the fundamental premise in this whole thing, that the BJP numbers are coming down. The only way, the only way that the BJP could have formed the government, and I am not agreeing with that, I reiterate what I said before. If Modi had been the face. Not only that, is the Prashant Kishore theory, which is, that the anti-BJP vote should get divided 
between the Congress and the Samajwadi and the BSV as it happened in 2017. But that's not really happening It here. is not happening now. In fact, what you're saying yeah. is that the anti-BJP non Yadav OBC vote is going to Samajwadi. Yes. The Brahmins were disillusioned may not go to Samajwadi, but they won't vote for the BJP in the same way. They'll go to Congress. And that's also perhaps true of the non jatav Dalits. They also may not vote for the BJP in the same way. They may go to other parties. Yes. And the Muslims, to 80% or even more, will solidly support Samajwadi. So what you're saying is that the churn in the way different sections of the population vote will be A, strengthening Akhilesh, non-OBCs, uh, non jadav OBCs, Muslims going to him and weakening the BJP. Brahmins moving away, non jadav Dalits moving away. I am saying exactly the same. I am going one step further vis-a-vis -vis the Muslim vote that you haven't mentioned Mr. OVC. I will stick my neck out and say the Muslims do not vote Mr. OVC either. So his putting up candidates is not going to split the Muslim vote, which was the great fear the Samajwadi and his allies had. I think it has hurt Mr. Ovesi's uh, image of coming out as a Muslim leader nationally. He is being perceived as a spoiler, as a vote katwa. And also perhaps as the B face of the BJP or something? That they say? always say. They are saying that consistently. All right, Mr. Jam, you've given me multiple reasons, and we've gone through them in great detail, why the BJP vote will be shrinking, shrinking to a point where you said the BJP will lose and not form the government. And you also given me many reasons why Akhilesh's vote will be growing and growing to an extent where he and his allies will comfortably make a government. You've been bold and brave and you've stuck your neck out. Are you worried that on the 10th of March you could be a very embarrassed man? Let's do one thing. If I if I'm wrong, I take you out for a dinner and if you win or rather the BJP forms a the government, then then you take me out for a dinner. If you lose, can I choose an expensive restaurant? I'm so confident. And vice won't. versa. And vice versa. And vice versa. So I'll end by repeating my first question. You unequivocally confirm that you believe. You unequivocally confirm you believe the BJP will not win the election and not form the government on the 10th of March. I've enjoyed this interview. Yes, I think I, I believe what I'm saying. You believe the BJP will lose? Indeed. Mr. Zhang, thank you very much indeed. Take care, stay safe. Thank you.